Hey guys and welcome back to TEW. If you missed the last episode, we are Classic Championship Wrestling and this is my local to global. If you missed the last show, we had Rebel Kel defeat Ruby Rays. The Midnight Heat were talking crap before being challenged by Eric Black, Eric Black, Eric Cannon and Black. Logan Regal defeated Adriel Notice. Drexel defeated Mike Seidel, cut a promo and then dragged him backstage. Ultrasonic defeated JJ Garrett and Kerry Awful. And then Midnight Heat defeated PJ Black and Eric Cannon. Now this was held in the Midwest, not our home territory, but we are trying to build that area up. Our next event will be in the Northwest, so we are going to sim ahead a little bit. And if we find any interesting news, we'll talk about it. If not, I'll see you at the show. Cash Wheeler is apparently dating Sarah Stock. Who knew? <laughs> so Joaquin Wilde is actually leaving the WWE. He could be an interesting character to pick up. DJ Z from TNA. How much would he be? 400. He's also 38. I actually thought he was younger than that. We'll shortlist him just in case. We might not bring him in. But what's his popularity like? 36 across the board. He could really help the division. But for 400 pounds, there's probably other people that'd be just as useful, to be honest. Okay, so last episode, at the end, we were speaking about bringing in potentially someone that Stardom was releasing. Takumi Baba is leaving Zero One. He's 25. His skills are pretty damn good. If he doesn't get snapped up by someone and his contract runs out in 30 days, we're going to sign him and hope he moves over. That's my plan, because he could be a really good young star to build up. Okay, it is show night. So, give the night off. We are going to give the night off to a few people. We're going to give it off to Rebel Kel, because she worked the last event. So Rebel Kel can have it off. We're going to keep Danica off as well. We'll let the Hall Sisters wrestle. I think we'll give Russman and Josiah the night off. We'll give Kevin Black with the night off too. I think everyone else can stay. Yeah, I'm happy with everyone else. Uh, tonight's venue, we're back in the Northwest. Now, unfortunately, it is December 30th. This will be our third show this month, so probably won't gain any popularity, but that's okay. Locker room incidents. Kevin Cook and Radar were really getting on well backstage. Their good mood was infectious and lifted everyone's spirits. Awesome. Uh, Brian Cook was in fine form before the show, keeping everyone in great mood with his hilarious road stories. Uh, Ricky Gibson has been talking to Radar a lot and seems to have some degree of influence over his behaviour. Well, good. I'm glad people are warming up to him. Uh, D'Lo did pre-show training for Lisa Hall and Devon did it for Adriel Notice. Awesome. Uh, can we inspire? We can. We won't know because it's the end of the month. We won't. Let's meddle and let's try and be a bond between Radar and Sonico. Continue that, hopefully. Awesome. Right, show-wise, what do we want to do? CC Boost, we still want to bring him in. And I had an amazing idea in the comment section for him and Swoggle to become a team going forward, so that is something we are going to invest in. Not quite yet, though. We are going to bring CC Boost in, though. I think we'll bring Haley in, too. Uh, yep. We need another heal for our ladies. Lord Byron needs to come in. He can be a face. Perfect. Right. So with that being said, let's work on our show. We are going to have the ladies main event. So Bambi Hall and Lisa Hall are going to take on Hawley Cromwell and Kikio. I'm going to risk it. And I want these guys to try and have a high spots match. I want to see how well that does. What we are going to do is also have Sonico and Radar in the pre-main event. That's not even the right word for it, but that's okay. And I kind of want these guys to go up against Ricky Gibson and Eddie Pearl. Now, I know we're building them up, but I am going to have Eddie Pearl get the win. But we are going to protect Sonico and Radar. And the story is that they're a new team, right? So before that, we will have the Midnight Heat. Eddie Pearl. 
and Ricky Gibson. We also need Sonico. He's going to be off screen along with Radar. And essentially, Midnight Heat is going to be. They're sort of like talking down Ultrasonic. Just how they're a poor team and that no one can really take them serious. Like the tag division is theirs, all that fun stuff. And then the story is that Ultrasonic actually do really well and prove themselves as a team. That's the story of the match. Now, as always, Drexel is amazing. <laughs> Absolutely amazing. So he's going to go on against Lord Byron. We're going to give these guys 12 minutes. Drexel is going to be storytelling because he's so weird. And that is that. And then after that, you know how this goes. Drexel cut a promo for four minutes. Drexel continues. Cryptic. As I can't spell. <laughs> Cryptic, that's still not right, never mind. Uh, cryptic messages talking about unknown danger this time. So, like, his thoughts are all over the place and whatnot. That's gonna be part one. And then part two, Drexel is basically gonna be the attacker. Um, God, what was his opponent called? Lord Byron is gonna be the victim. It's gonna last two minutes and essentially Drexel does what he did to Mike Seidel and he just like drags him backstage and we never see him part three I don't need so when delete part three there we go beautiful should be a six minute segment excellent now in between those matches we do need something because I don't want the um, promos being back to back I'm not a big fan of that personally so I'm thinking we will do the Hall Brothers so, uh, Brian Cook, sorry, Cook, that's it, not the Hall Brothers, and Mike Santiago and Ethan HD. I'm going to give these guys 16 minutes, and Brian Cook is going to get the win, and I really hope they don't shit the bed and let me down. Which means my opening match, of course, Adriel Notice versus CC Boost. We'll have Adriel Notice get the win. They are going to work the crowd. Perfect. Only problem is I need to book seven more minutes. What I could do, and I am debating it. Oh, do I want to do this? Is it worth the risk? We will risk it. Why not? We're going to change it up. We're going to have the ladies go 20 minutes in a spectacle. They never let me down. I want to see if they can pull this off. Because if they can, then we have some serious like contenders in our women's division. So, that is the plan. Adriel Notice is going to get to defeat CC Boost. He's been taking a lot of losses for us, Adriel. So I'm hoping we can build him up a tiny bit so he can keep taking some losses. We're continuing with Drexel, doing his whole cryptic sh stick, and then continuing to kidnap people. The Cook Brothers and the American Guns are going to just go all out for 16 minutes. Midnight Heat doing what they do best, and then the amazing tag match with those guys. I like what we have here. So, let's see what the show says. Uh, 39 from CC Boost, we expected that. 24 from Notice. 31 rating overall. Awesome. Drexel with 36 again. They can't go 12 minutes, apparently. Interesting. I would like to build up his psychology. I know he's not the youngest member on the roster, but if I can build his psychology... I'd really, really like that, because I want to use Drexel a lot going forward. Especially since he knows how to cut a promo. Like, 25 rating, then a 42. 30 overall. Cook Brothers and the American Guns. Wrestling rating, 42. Segment rating, 46. Both have tag team specialist ratings. Oh man, maybe that should be my main event. These two teams killed it. The promo was good, perfect. 54 rating. Tag team specialist, great chemistry when teaming together. Look at this radar with the 41, almost as good as Eddie Pearl. Man. Our tag division's on fire. 21 rating, ugh. Okay, not amazing. It's also David Marquez done it, I should have checked that. The Hall Sisters, though, 33 and a 38. That's pretty decent. 
considering the match load in the middle, I'm really happy with that. Segment rating is going to really bring us down, but I don't mind that at all. Yeah, so 37 overall, not bad. No popularity changes again because we're so close to the end of the month. I expected that. Dress in the locker room. I think we have to give it to the Hall sisters again. Bambi Hall and Lisa Hall. Both pleased and was happy. Financial report. We lost one and a half thousand again. I can deal with that. Okay. Okay, it's the day after the show. We don't really have any interesting news. However, Marigold's kooky i think that's how you say it i've not watched marigold since the first show to be honest but she did stand out is on the rise it'd be awesome to bring her in because she is really good from what i saw but it's going to be pretty impossible because trying to lure her to the states unless she decides she wants to wrestle in the states is going to be an issue kenta's offer from ajpw and we obviously hired hawley okay we are going to skip forward one more day i usually end the episode here but it is New Year's Eve, and the year-end awards will come out tomorrow, so we might as well check those out this episode. Okay, here we go. Let's check them out. So male wrestler of the year was Cody Rhodes. Female was Rhea Ripley. Two, you could probably guess. Coming to the year, WWE. Male tag of the year was Los Hermanos Chavez. Angel Dior and Nabila Roya. Okay. Female tag of the year was Luvia and La Joshita. Two Mexican teams. Interesting. Uh, match of the year, Logan Paul defeated Cody Rhodes. I hate that. Show of the year, Bad Blood. Male Young Wrestler of the Year was Mascarada Dorada. Not surprised. Female of the Year was Roxy or Roxanne. Interesting. Male Punk, female Nia Jax. Uh, okay. <laughs> Male Independent Wrestler of the Year was Yuki Inno. Female was uh, Chiriro Hashimoto. I'm definitely butchering some of these names. Heyman Manager of the Year, obviously. Female Manager of the Year was Thea Trinidad. Ooh. Most like playthroughs I've done, it's always Maxine Dupree. Michael Cole was Play by Play of the Year, or Male Play by Play of the Year. Female was Ihara. Male Colour, Cotton Tail, was Milano Collection AT. Female was uh, Sayoka Mika. Okay. Referee of the year, Charles Robinson, hell oh yeah. And Jessica Carr got female of the year, perfect. Interesting. W Network has closed, Kid Bandit's back, return of Caitlin. Ooh. Ooh, Southeast, damn it, otherwise. Oh, she's retired anyway. Can I talk her out of retirement? No, okay, never mind. Not even worth looking at. Any other interesting news? AJPW hired Lance Archer, Sabanero Jr. Do we have any year-end awards, though? Let's find out. Match of the Year, Midnight Heat defeated Ultrasonic. So the match we just had. Card of the Year was CCW Live with the 40 rating. Well, okay then. Hopefully next year we'll have some more year-end awards. We'll have to hold more shows, have more matches. But for now... We are going to wrap this episode up here. Let us know what you think about this playthrough. Again, as always, let us know about any people you think we should bring in, any matches we should put on, who should be in our title tournaments when they happen. A little spoiler alert. And all sorts of fun stuff like that. If you have enjoyed, please drop the episode a like. It helps us amazingly. And subscribe to The Wrestling Hideout for more fancy booking like this, for list videos, for reviews of wrestling and all that fun stuff. And hopefully, we'll see you again soon. Bye, guys.